to come and speak to us. Is mnamjua sasa anaitwa GP. Si tumpikia makofi tumwambie karibu. Please thank you pastor. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. Um thank you pastor. Uh pastor was in the fountain in England uh not long ago and uh and I'm very sure if you ever went to the churches the churches of England you would find uh it's full of old people. Old people. People who found Christ when they were getting old. And uh it's been one of my problems the fact that young people do not um come to church and so uh thank you pastor for encouraging uh youth and uh thank you so much and uh let's turn our bibles to revelation 21 verses 8 i want to talk from revelation 21 verses 8 i got this message in northampton and uh i went to a ganian church and first day there the word of god came strong to me and um i believe pastor when when god gives a word first of all it's for you first before to the church and when i found this it changed my life you know and uh <coughs> 21 verses 8 <clears throat> I read Now I'm using the NIV but the it says cowardly but the King James says the fearful but the fearful Okay but the fearful the unbelieving the vile the murderers the sexually immoral so those who practice magic arts the idolaters and all liars their place will be in the fiery lake of the burning sulfur this is the second death wow Wow. And I'm very sure if we um uh, look at the scenes that God was alighting here, we're very quick to pick out things like uh, uh uh magic arts, fornication, idolatry, murder and things like that. We will fail to look at what the Bible said, the coward. The King James said the fearful. Wow. God's going to cast the fearful to hell. Wow. When I saw that I said, Whoa! talk to me about this wow so i'm calling my short message today the scene of fear somebody said is is fear a scene yeah a thousand times yeah so it's a scene that can take one to hell that's what the bible is saying that's what jesus is saying that i'll cast them away that's what the bible is saying i mean if we look at take uh, second timothy 2 uh second timothy 1 verse 7 it says god has not given us a spirit of fear he hasn't given us So if we have the spirit of it it's coming from somewhere else a very ungodly source and that's why God will not tolerate fear if if you if you ask my brothers about me when I was growing up in Nigeria I was a very fearful boy I mean if you watch Nollywood um you can see a lot of the aha uh-huh, not very godly stuff in there I grew up very very fearful as a matter of fact when it was 7 o'clock in the evening I was asleep because I was so scared afraid of everything of demons of 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 everything dark I'll run the bed before my mother came back from the market I'll be asleep because I was scared I grew up a very fearful man a very fearful man but thank god as the word of god began to grow in us we um we became bold in the things of god right. and fear went away now I'm talking about you know this fear is not an ordinary kind of fear when we look at the bible um in 21 verse 8 uh, it's a greek word called delos it's not an ordinary kind of fear and if you go to um uh, the bible other parts of the bible when the bible talks about fear for example in 2 philip in philippians 2 verse 12 when it says what catch your salvation with fear and trembling it's a different word entirely it's not the same word the word that was used for that is phobos it means reverent fear You know if Uhuru Kenyatta comes here now you stand up to shake his you don't see that and shake his hands that's reverent fear and that's the kind of fear we have for God reverent fear reverent fear for a husband for a father for a pastor it's phobos now what we're dealing with here is delos it means a great dread of fear now that word delos appears just twice in the bible all through the bible Here in Revelation 21 verse 8 and in Matthew 14 when Jesus Christ walked on water and when he said oh ye of little faith why are you afraid that was the same word delos 
that was used there, Pastor. Delos. Now, what kind of fear is Delos? What kind of fear? Because if Christ said, why are you afraid? In other words, you should believe in me, but now you are afraid. You believe in the wrong stuff. It becomes a scene. You know, um, one of the characters in the Bible that inspires me a lot is Gideon. And uh, <clears throat> if we'll please turn our Bibles to Judges verses number 6. I will read from verses 15. But Lord, Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. Now, as a matter of fact, the Midianites came to attack Israel, and they were destroying Israel, and uh, everybody was running away. As a matter of fact, this guy, Gideon, he was the most fearful man in all of Israel. He ran, he hid himself underneath, and then the angel came and said, God wants to use you. He said, how? How can, I, how can this be? He said, my family is the weakest. And I, you know, I'm the weakest in the family. He was afraid. What, what's, what, what's, what, what makes my heart happy is what the Lord said in return. He said, go in your strength. Woo. He didn't argue with Gideon. He didn't say, no, you got it. He said, go in your strength. Because God's deposited that already in Gideon. So God said, go in the strength. And then when you look through, all through the Bible, when God says, go, he empowers. You know, he, Jesus Christ said uh, <coughs> to the prostitute, he said, no one condemned you, neither will I. He said, go and sin no more. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel. But before he did that, he gave them power. So when God says go, he empowers. So he told this man, hey, come on now. You got something in you. Go in that strength. But how did this guy see himself? Gideon, he saw himself as the fearful man in all of Israel. Now there are some people here, you know, you, you look, when you stand before God, you condemn your own self. You're like, I'm dirty. I'm a sinner, but God looks at you and says, you are a saint. You know? So this guy was so afraid. Now think about what would have happened if he did not obey the command of God. Israel would, uh, uh, Israel would be like Gaza today. Now this boy, he obeyed. But what God did with him first was to make sure he killed the spirit of fear. As a, when, when God appears to anybody in the Bible, be it Mary, anybody, the first thing God says is, fear not. That's the first thing. Now, why, why does God, why does, he, why does he always have to say, fear not? Because fear comes in the way of God's plan in your life. As a matter of fact, the word fear appears 365 times in the Bible. So that's one fear not every day for you. <laughs> in other words, we should work our lives daily victoriously. The first thing God would do is fear not. Fear not. And then he makes the atmosphere good to receive what he has to say. God will say fear not. That's why he becomes a sin to fear because God has commanded you not to fear. If God commands you, Bible says, you know, God commanded Adam not to eat of the fruit in the garden, but he did. So it became a transgression. So if God has said, fear not, how dare you fear? It's not allowed. It's not allowed. Fear is not our cup of tea. It's not allowed. We are sons of God, a living God who is mighty in battle. So we walk our lives daily with mindset of victors, not of fearful little boys and girls. Because we serve a living God. Who is big and mighty in battle? The destiny of Israel was laid upon Gideon. But there was one thing between the destiny of Israel. It was fear. It had to get out of the way. Now think about it. If that guy did not cast away his fear, think about the destiny of Israel. And I believe 
there are a lot of people here who, there are businesses that you could even do. Wanting stands in the way, fear. There are so many things we can achieve, but fear, what if I fail? What if I fall? It comes in the way. You see, these things hinder our success. It hinders our success. So fear is a sin. The Bible says, you know, like I said, when I started, you know, um, if you ask, you know, in Revelation 21 verses 8, what is a sin? We'll be quick to say murder, murder, sexual immorality. These things are sin, but we forget some things that are also sin, like fear. Uh, God said he will cast them into hell for being afraid. How does the Bible define fear? How does the Bible define fear? Paul said anything that's done without love is sin. That's how God defines sin. Anything that's done without love is sin. Fear is done without love. You know, I don't want to talk too much and uh, before I give Pastor the time to come on. Uh, I just want to talk, give us tools to overcome fear. There are two major tools to overcome fear. Two major tools. Number one is faith. So if we turn to the book of Matthew 14, I'll be reading from 22 to 33. <coughs> Matthew 14. If you have it on the screen, that'd be very kind. I'll just read from here. <coughs> Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up to a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. <clears throat> when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. They were afraid. It's a ghost! They said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Verse 28. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he says. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was, well, he was afraid. And he began to sink. And beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me! Verses 31, Jesus Christ, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? Christ rebuked him. 32, and when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. I like that passage so much. Fear gripped the hearts of the disciples. And Christ said unto Peter, Come on then, come on the water. And Peter come on the, came on the water. And he began to sink as he saw the waves. As he saw the waves, he began to sink Christ did not pray. Christ had to reach out to him, drag him out from sinking. Now, what changed? It was on the same water that Jesus was still standing on. On that water, Peter was getting drowned. Woo! There are people in God's presence who die. In church, they die. Something is wrong somewhere. Even if God's presence is mighty here, it's not a yacht stick. It's not an assurance <laughs> that, <laughs> that something, wrong, something will not go wrong. Fate. The missing link was the fate. When he saw the waves, he became afraid and he began to sink on the same water that Jesus was. Why didn't Jesus sink? He commanded the waves. And Peter looked at the water. He was terrified. He became little by the water, by the waves. He began to sink. Nothing changed. The water didn't change because Jesus was still standing in the water. What changed was that he substituted faith with fear. 
That's what changed. So it's important. The number one tool to cancel fear is faith. Faith. When we have faith, fear becomes a thing of the past. You see, faith makes us confident. But fear leaps. Fear is not courageous. Drags us back. It's not easy to face, you know, those back in the days when they had wars and things like that, you know, Israel. How do you think, how do you think a little boy like David would come before Goliath and stand before Goliath? When even Saul was afraid, he had something they didn't have. He had faith. Faith overcomes fear. It's fear that drowns, fear that sinks. Faith walks on water. Amen. It's an important tool. That's why they call Christianity faith. It is belief in God. It is belief in God. Faith is belief in God. The Bible says clearly, without faith, it's impossible. Please God. It's impossible. You see, so if we go back to the uh, topic of Delos, the fear. Now, what kind of fear are we talking about here that Peter could not, that, that conquered the heart of Peter? Peter lost his sight, his focus on the master. He took his focus to the sea, to the waves. He took his eyes away from faith but looked on fear. He focused on fear. He took his gaze away from the master. Too often we do that in life. And that's why we backslide. That's why we backslide. We get so crowded by things in life. Sometimes the job and we lose our gaze from the master. And every little thing becomes a problem for us. Everything becomes a problem for us. For, for us. Peter took his gaze from the Lord and he immediately he took his gaze away from the Lord. He began to drown, to sink. That's what fear does. Faith is remaining steadfast on the Lord. That's what it is. So, fear now means taking your gaze away from the Lord. There are some people, Christians, in the house of God, they have random thoughts in their head. Oh, what if I die now? And, and, and if I die, will I make heaven? They ask these questions. Strong faith maintains, does not wobble, does not shake. You don't ask those kind of questions. If I have a faith in God... It should not shake. It becomes a sin when my faith is, faith is converted into fear. It, the moment I take my eyes away from the Lord, from his salvation, <laughs> becomes a sin. Delos, the fear of losing your faith. Most of us, you know, you, know, you, 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 you meet some people and, and the way they sound, you know, they're not grounded in the things of God. They're like, you know, you never can tell, you know, I, 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 I could lose my faith. We don't talk like that. We are different. We don't talk like that. We can't lose our faith in the Lord. Our faith must be steadfast in the Lord. The second tool, which is the last, for overcoming fear is love. Love. I read from 1 John, this is chapter number 4. Verses 18. There is no fear in what? Love. See, but perfect love drives out fear. <laughs> perfect love drives out fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. You see, the one who fears is not made perfect. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear. Perfect love drives out fear. Perfect love drives out fear. Why? Because fear has to do with punishment. It has to do with condemnation. You're afraid. <gasps> what if the Lord comes today? I could go to hell. If you know the Lord loves you and you love the Lord, you will have no fear. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, if there is a spirit of God in us, it bears witness in us. I know God loves the world and I know he loves me. I have that consciousness. 
I know, I know, I know he loves me. I'm in a boss. If anything happens, I know he loves me. He'll watch out for me. There is a, there is a, there is a unity between the son and the father. Perfect love. You know, I'm not a daddy yet, but um, I used to take my sister's baby to school back in Nigeria. And that little boy, <laughs> when we're going home and I'm dragging his hand along, you know, and he sees some sweeties and soda and ice cream, he doesn't ask me, uncle, do you have money? No, I want that. He does, <laughs> he does not ask, do you have money? He's certain, you must do it for me. So, God help me if I don't have money. He does not, he does not ask you, uncle, do you have money? No, 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 no. He doesn't want to care. He doesn't want to know. All he wants is what he wants. That's how we should be with us and the Father. That's how we should be with us and the Father. You, the, the love is an assur- assurance in us. The Bible says the Spirit bears witness inside of us. Inside of us. Love Cast out of fear. You see, if you have a couple, you know, in a marriage, in a relationship, <clears throat> if there is true love, there will be no fear will this person cheat me or not. If it's true love, there will be no fear of... It doesn't matter if she works in a company where uh, 90% of the workers, the colleagues are men. True love guides... True love looks beyond now. It looks, you know, further. Even if that person falls, true love is there to pick them up. No fear. Paul said there is no fear in love. No fear in love. That's, that's, that's it. You know, if we go about the streets and preach to people about the love of God and we have fear in us, we don't know what we're talking about. We don't. We don't know what we're talking about. I love the Lord and the Lord loves me. What does that mean? What does it mean? David asks this question. What is man that you're mindful of him? Ah! You made him a little lower than the angels. David knew that God thinks about me. He was a man after God's heart. He knew. He said, what am I that you're mindful of me? You think about me. Woo! Wow. That's love. That's love. So, you know, I I was shocked when I saw that the first time. Revelation 21, verses 8. The fearful, I will cast them in hell. Wow. That's serious business. The same way we're careful of all kinds of sins like fornication, adultery, lie, murder, and everything. We should be careful with fear as well. We should be careful. Fear is, it's it's an underground sin that can steal the believer's salvation. It is. So we have faith, we have love. Let us kick fear away. There are two tools I've mentioned here, faith and love. Two great tools. To overcome fear. To live a victorious life in Christ. You know, you walk out, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You walk out in the dark, you're not afraid. Why? Because greater is he that is in you. Uh Uh-huh. We are aware. We know what we are made of. See, God wants you to know. God wants you to know. He doesn't just want to bless you and bless you. He wants you to know these things. They're important. Here is Fear is a sin, like every other sin. Because Paul said, like I said already, anything that's done outside of love is a sin. Fear is the opposite of faith and love. It's the opposite of faith and love. That's why it's a sin. So if we operate in fear on whatever level, we're contradicting what the word of God says. May the good Lord bless his word in our heart. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, that is great. Now you've known that uh, love, love, love is a greater tool. Can, 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 can I read you as I close? Uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 2. 
look at that. I, I just want to emphasize what uh, GP said. First Corinthians 13. Oh, it's there. That's it. Shall we read together? If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. So you realize that love is very powerful. Love is a great tool. Go to verses 3. If, let's read together again. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. So again, love is powerful. Verse, go to verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It does not proud. Move, move. It is not true. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Verse 6. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. We can finish it. Go up again. Move. It always protects always trusts, always hopes, always preserves. Love never fails. But where there is prophecies, they will cease. Where there is tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. But what happened to love? For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But what happened, verse 10? But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. Uh huh. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put on childish away. Now we see, but a poor reflection as in a mirror. Then we have see, we shall see face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully when as I am fully known. Then finally, read 13. And now these th three remains. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of all this is what? Love. Praise the name of the Lord. That's the most powerful scripture of love. That's how love is greater than speaking in tongues. It's greater than giving things. It's greater than prophecy. It's greater than the laying hands of people to be healed. If you have no love, all those are useless. So love becomes a tool. So God values love. He measures us in how much we love him. And then another thing is you can never love God if you don't love another. So if you don't love me, you don't love your neighbor, you don't love anybody, God measures that love to what, how the amount of love you give to, ad, to others, he knows that you love me. <laughs> you cannot love God if you don't love others. You cannot worship God if you cannot bless others. You see, many of us uh, would want to, if you ask somebody, do you love God? Yes, 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 I love the Lord. I love God so much that I can cry. But really, how much can you cry for your neighbor? I mean, if you cannot feel something, I said on Sunday, if you can never be moved by a sick person, a, 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 a person in prison, a person in poverty, a, a widow, an orphan, or even a, an alien, then you are not born again. You are hard, your heart is so hard like a stone. Let me tell you, it's only love that can move the heart of God. A love can move the heart of God. But let me tell you, God always puts us in a weighing scale. There's a the times that God will send somebody, go and tell so and so to give you money. Somebody will come and tell you, well, I, I don't know why I'm, I came to you. I woke up this morning and I felt like I should come to you, ask for something. Ask for 200 shillings. And God knew that that 200 shillings is what you have budgeted for in the morning. And he wants it back. What will you do? So it's between you and your children, between you and your budget. And God sends you somebody. The best thing you can do is to tell God, I, I surrender it. You give it out you get a thousand. Amen. Those, I have many testimonies where God spoke, spoke to many, not one, said, give out and I'll bless you. Let me tell you, when God tells you I'll bless you, you don't know where. 
Sometimes you may be quiet for three days and you are still waiting for the blessing. But what, what I'm sure of, he is faithful. He can never promise and not fulfill. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for that word. Thank you, Lord, for our brother, GP, that has brought that word. The love is greater than all. Faith is also greater than all. We thank you, Lord, that in faith we can defeat fear. In love we can overcome every power. Lord, may this love, may faith become our food, become our joy, become our comfort, become our strength. Dismiss us with a blessing and bless our evening, bless our food, bless our bed, bless, bless your people, my Father. Give them favor and your grace in Jesus' name. And now with the grace and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you. Uh, next, last, next Tuesday, don't miss, I'll be, we'll be handling the issues of revelation uh, so that we, we climb back to where where uh, uh, GPA is. We want to come from 15. Go and read the Revelation 15, 16, 17.